Today I'm speaking with Blair Christie, Chief Marketing Officer at Cisco. Please join me for part two of this special interview on this episode of Substance. This has to be the most exciting time to be the CMO of a company like Cisco talking about the things that you it, are doing right now. It is. I will tell you, I've been at Cisco for 15 years, so I was around in the late 90s, and that was a very exciting time. But remember, that was the cusp of really the first wave of the Internet where everything was going mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. And then we moved into e-commerce, mm -hmm. and that was fascinating. Then we moved into the social world, mm -hmm. and now we're moving to this internet of everything. Mm -hmm. So these moments are always interesting. One, because there's winners and losers. Mm -hmm. And the good news is it's not predetermined, right? Mm -hmm. um, we've seen that time and time again. The other exciting thing is you can experiment mm -hmm. and do different things. And mm -hmm. certainly as marketers or as communications professionals, mm -hmm. we like that opportunity. Now there's more mm -hmm. science today and I'm definitely a numbers person coming from an investment management mm -hmm. background, mm -hmm. so I like the data. Uh, but the art of, of the opportunity between marketing and communication uh, leaders is still very much there because you can experiment and iterate. Uh, the biggest challenge is just can you do it fast enough? So you, you, you actually picked up on something I wanted to ask you about, mm -hmm. which is the investor relations or the money management side yes. and the marketing side, yes. which I would also called the art and the science of Absolutely. marketing. And mm -hmm. that's one thing that before, uh, you know, again, not mm -hmm. very long ago, 10 mm -hmm. years ago, mm -hmm. marketing was one of those things where there was much more art than there was science. Yes. And now we're bridging into the science yes. science gap and especially being able to, you know, maybe prove a little bit more that marketing is successful yes. using technology yes. to be able to use uh, to, to help marketing. How, how do you kind of see that? Are you excited? I'm sure you're excited by mm -hmm. what's happening and mm -hmm. where do you see it going so that sure. we can prove that marketing is actually sure, working more. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> it's sort of that age-old uh, yeah. question that marketers always have. Well, you know, my background was investor relations, and it, you know, it truly was a marketing job. That amazing leader that I shared with mm -hmm. you earlier, um, he always told me, you know, stocks are sold, they're not bought. Mm -hmm. Don't ever forget that. And so when I worked with investors, as much as I was providing them a very clear view of the company's strategy and financial performance and uh, everything else that they needed to make an investment decision, I was also selling mm -hmm. because you're competing in the market. Uh, when you moved to, and I loved it because you could have a return, you could have a PE, you could have a ROIC. I mean, you pretty much could measure just about any way you wanted to. Um, and what I'm seeing in marketing today is that same opportunity, uh, but it goes so much farther. Mm -hmm. I mean, first, we are getting information about our customers today that our sales team, they simply don't have. And I believe Cisco has one of the strongest, most amazing sales team in the world, mm -hmm. renowned. But at the same time, when 70% of the buyer's journey is now online, mm -hmm. how could they possibly mm -hmm. know? So they need us, right? Mm -hmm. And we like to be needed mm -hmm. as marketers and comms professionals. So we're bringing all that information Can together. Can I high five you hell, right now? Hell yes, right? okay. absolutely. Right. So we're trying to bring all that together to help the sales team just do what they need to do best, and that is sell faster and sell more effectively. Mm -hmm. So it's a powerful opportunity. And with that data, we can put more measurement around it, right? How mm -hmm. much did we bring in from a marketing sourced lead versus mm -hmm. uh, what was already out there? And where did that turn into a booking? Mm -hmm. And you know, how much more did we accelerate you know, the velocity through mm -hmm. the funnel? So that's one way. Um, another way is simply looking at our costs. I mean, we were able to bring costs down mm -hmm. like never before. Mm -hmm. We don't need 900 vendors who are customized in each area, right? We're driving our own content and we can amplify at a much lower cost. So you're seeing a better ROI mm -hmm. in what we're delivering on the output, but also what's required for the input. Mm -hmm. And that's fantastic. And then just being able to experiment and figuring out what works and what doesn't. When we launched our new brand campaign, uh, not quite two years ago, about a year and a half ago, um, we practiced with a, a few things. We did traditional media. We obviously did social media. Mm -hmm. You know, I look at what you do, and you know, the same thing. We follow the lead you have, where you crowdsource, where you mm -hmm. try to get information and try to amplify. But we also used augmented reality. Uh, we hadn't seen a B two B company use augmented reality in trying to tell our story differently, but also to try to illustrate what the internet of everything, mm -hmm. and when you connect the unconnected, what amazing things could happen. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're not familiar uh, with augmented reality, you use your phone or, or a tablet, mm -hmm. and if you download an app, you know you hover, mm -hmm. and it brings something that was stagnant to mm -hmm. life, right? So our, um, our print advertising, 
all was augmented reality. Mm -hmm. Not all of it, but a significant piece. You know, mm -hmm. never underestimate the power of a t-shirt. We gave our 70,000 employees t-shirts, and it was enabled with augmented reality, where you could actually, if you cut, if you hovered over with the tablet, it would tell the story, it would show oh, the cool. anthem ad. Lots of energy. But it was really interesting because it would then, once you were in there and experimenting with it, it would drive you to a landing page or an offer. Mm -hmm. And we found that individuals who came to us, Cisco.com, through augmented reality had mm -hmm. significantly longer hang time, mm -hmm. went deeper into the offers. Uh, we collected a ton more information. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, you know, we're not doing it broadly because we're still figuring out the right way to use it, mm -hmm. but we learned something. Mm -hmm. And we learned something that could be very targeted and we could really capture an audience. Mm -hmm. So that's a fun time. And there you can measure in a way that you just Mm -hmm. couldn't do before. So it's really exciting. Yeah. Kind of gets you kind of in a place where how do I prioritize what to do because there's so many opportunities to create new op new uh, vehicles and new engagements. You know, it's interesting. I um, I wrote a book uh, recently called Human to Human, and, mm -hmm. and it's um, really kind of diving into what you're talking right. about where you're trying to create a marketing and experience. Yes. And on a... a um, uh, uh, an experience you wouldn't expect that's mm -hmm. unexpected mm -hmm. and, and and really wants you to grab on. Um, and that's kind of what I hear you testing. Yes. Is that you're wanting to create experiences for yes. people yes. that want, that then part, you know, parlays them or takes them into your, your, your story. Exactly. Your experience. And you know, when you're in the B2B world, um, I always say to my peers, it should be easier. It's mm -hmm. like fishing in a barrel, right? Mm -hmm. We have a set of customers. We know a lot about them, at least about their organization. We're learning more about them as an individual every day. Um, so we, sh we should be even easier. We should be ahead, mm -hmm. um, perhaps because there's a select few. We, are, we aren't, but um, the more you learn and the more you bring them in, especially mm -hmm. um, if the value you're bringing is more towards the organization than the individual, that experience they have with you yeah. is really important, right? So like when I go online and I buy from Nordstrom, like they don't really care about the rest of my family. They just know they want to sell me that dress mm -hmm. I looked at last week. Right. Whereas when you're trying to sell something into an entity, mm -hmm. you're trying to give a benefit for the entire entity, maybe not exactly that individual. Mm -hmm. So the experience plays a much more impactful role um, because it makes it easier, mm -hmm. it gets them to what they need to do faster, makes them the hero. We're mm -hmm. a lot about trying to make our customers and our users and our buyers the hero mm -hmm. to their organization. And um, that experience, you're right, it just goes a long way. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that um, I'm also curious about is how you're looking at um, your partners mm -hmm. because you've got this huge partner network. Cisco is really, you know, partner centric. Sure. Um, and you're also trying to communicate a message through your um, market, marketing team, your sales team. I mean, you have all these silos, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and, and how do you look at that when you're communicating through your organization, right. especially with your partners? Right. Well, Cisco's focus on partners and leveraging an ecosystem goes way back. Uh, so if I can brag a bit, I do think we've perfected or come as close to perfection in terms of understanding the value. Mm -hmm. That's usually the first step. And then the different roles. So we've worked very hard over the past two, three decades to make sure that we win and our partners win together. So with that as a backdrop, the most compelling thing is when you have multiple people trying to drive to um, a certain destination, um, it's a North Star. And for us, the recent discussion around this next wave of the internet, mm -hmm. that amazing things happen when you connect the unconnected, all the data, all of the opportunities, it's a very compelling North Star for all of us to go talk to our customers, our partners' partners, our influencers, stakeholders, you fill in the blank, about the need for change mm -hmm. or the need to have a different discussion. Mm -hmm. So that goes a very long way. We also have a marketing partner council where we bring in the marketing leaders from all of our different partners on a global basis. And we bring them together to help them understand the brand, the story, the campaigns that we're running, but more importantly, get their feedback. Because what we think will fly doesn't always fly, perhaps in a local area or perhaps mm. with a particular partner. So we get a lot of uh, two-way dialogue. Mm -hmm. And we get them into shared goals. And that's really what's mm. helped us a lot, is we get shared goals across the partner community, mm -hmm. across the different stakeholders, across our own organization. Mm -hmm. right? Everyone's a marketing person, mm -hmm. whether they're in my organization or not. Mm -hmm. They're out there touching or dealing with a customer or partner. So that shared goal mentality, mm -hmm. um, much harder mm -hmm. to do than to say has been really helpful because we've had a North Star 
and we're kind of aligning around the same set of initiatives. Mm -hmm. And that's been helpful. The opportunity with this next wave of the internet um, is everyone's opportunity. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look back to the late 90s and you saw new value created, but you saw value shift, mm -hmm. right, from perhaps uh, a Barnes & Noble's to an Amazon, right? The best example of how value moved quickly. Mm -hmm. Same thing's happening here. And a, a lot of companies and a lot of organizations are gonna create a ton of value for themselves. It's mm -hmm. not just one or two companies that are gonna win, which is what I do think we saw in the last wave of the internet around social. Mm -hmm. So I think there's gonna be, you know, there's a compelling opportunity for a lot of people, and I believe they see that. When you look at the major changes that have happened in mm -hmm. history and communication mm -hmm. specifically, mm -hmm. and now you just look at social media and how fast it happened. Yes. I mean, just it was like that. Yes. Um, do you think that the internet of everything will be faster? I think it will be faster. I think it's already speeding up. Um, I don't know exactly how that will look. Like, what does faster mean? Mm. Certainly, information dissemination mm -hmm. is milliseconds, right? I honestly believe I tweeted you and within less than a minute, because I know I hadn't driven out of my community yet, you had already sent me a note back. Mm -hmm. So the information is already moving fast enough. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's the decision making. So the when you get into places or environments where you have to make decisions mm -hmm. more quickly, that's going to speed up. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't know ex exactly what that looks like, mm -hmm. but I see it come to play in industries, right? Manufacturing. Mm -hmm. right? We have seen true manufacturers, you know, large global manufacturers, being able to understand how their product is being used and come back and make a quick design change and mm -hmm. put it on the floor in you know a quarter of the time that it used to take. That's what's happening mm -hmm. faster. And ultimately that means something a little different to individuals, but it means a big deal, obviously, mm -hmm. for companies and uh, governments and organizations around the world. So let's talk now about disruption because we're talking about the speed at which things are disrupting. Mm -hmm. So then all of a sudden everything's disrupting. Yes. So what's disruptive? You know, it's true. Uh, it, and it's kind of fatiguing after a while. I find myself, Yeah. wow, I, I just was just getting excited and happy about this. a glass of wine and this. some TV after a while, right? You do, right? <laughs> you need to go back to Minecraft <laughs> and just veg out for a while. Uh, what is disruptive? You know, it definitely is going to change. I, I believe that you want you want to be disruptive to uh, uh, in service of something, mm -hmm. right? I tell my teams all the time, innovation is great. Just make it sure it's not just a great idea. Sure, it's actually in service of our company's strategy. So disruption is going to be obviously um, probably deeper mm -hmm. and more broad hitting than everything we've, anything we've seen before. Mm -hmm. So we'll see disruption in disciplines like ours, that'll change everything, mm -hmm. right? Just being able to capture information in a digital journey has changed a lot. Mm -hmm. And then you'll probably see even greater disruption more broadly. Mm -hmm. It's gonna go even deeper, it's gonna affect even more people. It's mm -hmm. not just gonna be disruption on how you buy car insurance or potentially how you connect with your doctor. It's, right. it's gonna be even more broad. It's a little fatiguing, but mm -hmm. it's exciting. How do you disrupt a seventy thousand person organization? How, how do you? That's no small tremendous small tenacity. <laughs> tremendous tenacity. I love that. Yeah, you have to be very resilient when you're in larger organizations. Uh, you always have been, but mm -hmm. for different reasons now. To move uh, such a large organization in a certain direction, mm -hmm. um, you have to be very resilient, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not easy. But when you do it, it becomes very addictive because you can see the impact mm -hmm. uh, that you have. We talked um, a lot about relationships. And in this case, to move a large organization, mm -hmm. you need those deep relationships because mm -hmm. trust and understanding. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say when you want to move fast, you centralize. And when you, when you scale, you uh, decentralize. Mm -hmm. And for us today, we're trying to move fast and scale. Mm -hmm. And so whether it is, you know, the... Um, focus on an initiative or accountability or decision making or budget or even org structure, mm -hmm. trying to toggle between that is probably the biggest challenge. And so to be very resilient and know that when, you know, everybody says fail fast, which mm -hmm. I think is might be a little overused, but mm -hmm. it is true. Mm -hmm. Try something. If it doesn't work, call it and move on quickly. Mm -hmm. And that is kind of hard to do in a larger organization. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys have certainly done that, and and everyone has. So I think that sure. there, you know, it, it's it's something where you've been able to pick back up again yep. and move on. And I think that's the that's one of the keys that I that I like about Cisco. I think I'm selling you guys here. Oh, I'm, that's I'm, fine. I'm, keep I'm going. Keep, I'm not yeah. even paying you. So, it's great. <laughs> what, so one of the, what it, tell me a little bit about um, 
uh, ways that you connect now. You were telling mm -hmm. me off camera about, em, you know, employee connection and you mm -hmm. guys had some uh, videos that mm -hmm. you did, especially with the sure. CEO, I believe. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so can, there's connect and there's connect, right? And so uh, there's ways, you know, that we use text and we use more real-time um, uh, tools to get our teams moving and to mm -hmm. share information, but then there's the deep connect. Mm -hmm. And somehow you want to have this nice balance between the two. One of the uh, roles of technology in our world today at Cisco has been probably the most impactful to connect and then go deep and connect with our employees is how we have used telepresence and our own collaboration technology to have quarterly employee meetings, mm -hmm. right? Where I was sharing with you, we've brought at times close to 40, 45,000 employees together at one time mm -hmm. on a global basis. Now clearly they're not all gonna fit into a local arena. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is we're bringing them in from their locations and the experience is so robust and so engaging that they're showing up, right? They don't mind going and sitting in a room with you know, 100 or 200 of their colleagues mm -hmm. and watching perhaps our CEO talk or our other executives talk and then engaging in Q&A because that experience is really deep, plus they get a voice. Mm -hmm. So we've been doing that now and we do that with seven to 10 locations on a global basis. Uh, we share our most important moves and decisions in our strategy. Perhaps we educate. Uh, we have all sorts of purposes for the employee meetings, but it's been significant because they have a voice and even more importantly, a face, mm -hmm. right? They're not this voice of God mm -hmm. across um, a telephone line. Mm -hmm. So that's been uh, significant. Uh, we're also doing all of this as we're trying to move more of our employees uh, globally. Uh, our largest employee base is uh, here in the San Jose uh, area, Bay mm -hmm. Area, uh, which has its uh, ups because of the talent mm -hmm. and just the innovation, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also very, very expensive. Housing is very difficult, mm -hmm. and frankly, we don't always have the most qualified talent here for what we need to do, right? What we've done in voice communications in Ireland, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a hotbed there. Mm -hmm. So we've been working really hard to figure out how do you build deep relationships, and even more importantly, keep the culture mm -hmm. consistent when you do that. And technology has been really significant mm. in how we've done that. So let's let's talk about social um, okay. a little bit and how social's a part of that. Sure. It's, it's not necessarily a, just a technology, but mm -hmm. it, it's a communications channel. It's a, it's a platform. Absolutely. How have you in, uh, embraced it? How mm -hmm. have you in, how, are you endeared towards it? Are you Absolutely. Using it? I mean, you did tweet me earlier, but I, I, I did. mean, how, how, how sure. are you using it both personally and as a, as a business? Sure, well, it's designed into everything we do as a business, internally and externally, marketing, engineering, um, you know, we embraced that way back, uh, I think when it was first starting, and built some collaboration um, uh, tools as well as portals inside of Cisco so people could start communicating. Okay. One challenge we had in IT, when the iPhone came out and everybody started bringing their own device, they didn't have enough technicians to help people download all of their Cisco software. Right? So we set up communities and all the Mac users and all the Apple users taught themselves. Mm. Um, and that was back in 2007, mm -hmm. 2008, right? I installed all my Cisco stuff myself wow. because I wasn't, didn't have somebody to come out and do it and I didn't want to wait for eight days. Mm -hmm. So we've really embraced it in how we work. Obviously our engineering, we use a lot of scrums, mm -hmm. our agile marketing, our agile mm -hmm. uh, approach methodology in everything that we do, whether it's marketing or engineering or even mm -hmm. our sales. And that's the only way we can keep ourselves moving at that very fast pace. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been significant. In marketing for us, it's the best way and the most cost efficient way to amplify. Mm -hmm. I don't have a very big budget. Mm -hmm. um, even though we look like a large company, I'm about a third of some of my peers mm -hmm. from an investment perspective. So how are we going to amplify and punch above our weight class mm -hmm. uh, with some of our large competitors who are spending six, seven times in advertising, traditional and digital. So we have a social media ambassador program mm -hmm. where we have it trained and enabled our employee population base. So they're subject matter experts uh, or they just have a really um, personal passion mm -hmm. and a good followership and we let them know when we need something amplified and bam, mm -hmm. it just really uh, goes far. And then they get recognition for it. Mm -hmm. I get an email, in fact today I had 18 emails recognizing members of the extended Cisco team for completing the training, mm -hmm. becoming specialists, and it's just a great way mm -hmm. to get them engaged. Mm -hmm. So that's been pretty significant. Mm -hmm. In the personal world, you know, it's a balance, <laughs> right? I, I'm on Instagram because my kids are on Instagram, um, and that's pretty, I'm on Facebook because my mom's on Facebook, so it kind of gives you an idea of how things have changed. Mm -hmm. But my Twitter handle and my LinkedIn are very much Business. professional, mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely. From an employee-driven organization, mm -hmm. how are you seeing social 
enabled? Is is there a, a transparency that you're allowing, or is mm-hmm. it? Um, and how do you how do you communicate that? Sure. Well, we have a code of business conduct, and within our code of business conduct, which spans from you know how you work with customers and partners to how you work globally to even your social media presence and mm-hmm. the, the reflection and re- on the reputation of the company, um, all employees have to sign the code of business conduct. And in it, there's a whole section around mm-hmm. social media. Um, then what we do, we have a very enlightened legal team. Probably one of the best partners I've ever had is our general counsel mm-hmm. and the team that works with him. Um, and they understand the power and the business impact. Mm-hmm. And they do their best to protect the company mm-hmm. while at the same time helping us create the most impact. Mm-hmm. Um, so we really do a, a lot of empowerment. As I said, there's training, um, but employees are pretty active too. You know, there's a certain piece of our business security mm-hmm. where um, the smart people are in the social communities mm-hmm. and they are just talking and talking. And it's um, it's very cult-like. Mm-hmm. They're very smart. They're always at the leading edge. And this is how they keep up because that world is moving mm-hmm. so fast. So our engineers, our thought leaders, our marketing leaders, our sales leaders, they're participating mm-hmm. in there. Um, and you know, when someone doesn't do it well, we make sure most people know about that. Mm-hmm. So it's a great example. Um, but frankly, that's just a very rare exception. People mm-hmm. are usually representing the company very well because they understand the code of conduct that they signed up to and they've also been trained. Mm-hmm. I know our mutual friend, um, Mark Yolton, yes. would, would agree with you on communities being yes. one of the biggest and most uh, vibrant yet probably you know one of the most sensitive areas as right. well. Right. And it's it's one of the things that we're all focused on as an economy is how to build right. community. community. Mm-hmm. Um, have you have you seen that go into a, an interesting place, mm-hmm. or is it kind of status quo? Or well, we I think we've used communities uh, okay to date. We have very vibrant communities when it comes to um, our certified uh, engineers out in the field. Not just Cisco, but there's a lot of what we call CCIEs, certified internetworking engineers, that are all a community. So we leverage it there, and that's powerful because they sit at our customers or our partners, and we uh, we co-create, we innovate we also troubleshoot. Mm -hmm. Uh, Networking academies. We have a million students go through networking academies and they have a very robust community. You can imagine the age group. Mm -hmm. Um, And they often tend to be our future employees or employees of our partners. So huge community there. Um, And we've built some communities around topics Mm -hmm. that we're engaged in. Where the opportunity is, and what I don't think we've yet realized in terms of opportunity, are the developers that are developing on top of the infrastructure. Um, That is new for Cisco. You mentioned Mark Yolton, um, who was formerly with SAP. Mm -hmm. They clearly mastered that Mm -hmm. um, because their power was amplified through their developer community. Mm -hmm. We haven't been in that business that really lent itself to it until today. Mm -hmm. And so we're learning the different type of community. It's not information sharing, it's actual creation together. Mm -hmm. And so I would say we probably get a nice B maybe a C plus, but there's a lot of opportunity for us to even go deeper mm. in communities and leverage that more. And mm-hmm. that's something we're focused on, not just with our digital strategy, but also our content mm-hmm. and how we take a, a more of a, a unique, compelling content approach for these communities. One other question I wanted to ask you is mm-hmm. what's what's next for you? What what drives you? What makes you get up every day and and, and go, man, I want to do this? Because you guys are are a powerhouse. Mm-hmm. You are one of the largest companies mm-hmm. on earth. Mm-hmm. And so how do you compete with that? Sure. And how do you compete with that? Well, my four-year-old gets me up every day. <laughs> so I would suggest everyone should get a four-year-old and then you can't stay in bed for too long. That goes a long way. That helps. I am a very much an extrovert. So people, I get my energy from people. Mm. And I believe I work with and get to engage with, uh, mm. outside of Cisco, some of the most amazing people mm. on the planet. Uh, so personally, for me, that is huge. The mm. work is always interesting. The manager is really interesting. But it's the people I work with that really get me moving. Um, and you know, you can have moments moments of being, having more energy than others, mm-hmm. having been in the Bay Area for 15 years. We move fast here, yeah. um, and it never really does slow down. But it is kind of exciting when you see the world changing around you, mm-hmm. and you see it here. So so the, the fact that we can measure our impact, that we've got great people, mm-hmm. and the world is changing in front of our eyes, to me, it's very energizing. Mm-hmm. Does it mean I wouldn't like a nice, you know, three-week sabbatical every once in a while, uh, just <laughs> like I'm sure everyone else around here? But um, there's just constantly something new. And if you're a curious extrovert like myself, it's a great place to be. Well, great. I can't thank you enough for being here today and for uh, talking to me. It was great. Thank you. Time went fast. (laughs) Good. Thank you, Brian. Well, cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you very much.